It's week two of the NFL preseason, where depth charts and playbooks will be put to the test. EA Sports coverage of the NFL has come to East Asia in the bustling metropolis that is Tokyo, Japan. But tonight, we've got a preseason matchup between the Portland Lumberjacks taking on the Dragons of Tokyo. Brandon Gaud and Charles Davis, happy to be back alongside you. And I'll tell you what, yes, it's just week two of the preseason, but now they've got one game under their belts and a lot of guys trying to prove some stuff down on the field here today. Not only that, these coaches like to win. And I used to think it really didn't matter who won in the preseason. Then I watched some of those shows that the NFL does, and you see the coaches in preseason after a... ready to get this one started and off we go here in Tokyo this take it in at the goal line and he's up past the 20 to the 22 yard line so out comes this offense to take over for the first time leading them out someone who took the league by storm last year is the most famous Mr. Irrelevant ever from Iowa State it's Brock Purdy and there's a word that constantly gets thrown around with this guy when you talk to anyone in the building potential they are sky high on what they believe he can grow into in the role of a starting quarterback in addition there are plenty around the league who think that as well and years from now he can still be leading this offense out multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game so much for coming out throwing as it leads to an early second down and long Purdy's throw pulled in by Kittle they really love to get him into one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and this is one way, work him out of the slot and create a mismatch. Who's going to cover it? Corner, safety, linebacker? He's got a way to beat all of those positions. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. Well, the incompletion, but now we also have an injured player. Well, you hate to see this before the regular season even begins. We'll take a break and come back. More preseason action in a moment. Wisnowski on to punt as he sends this one away. It'll be a net of 39. 41-yard punt, two on the return. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. Bringing them out is the 12th-year pro seeking a return to Pro Bowl form, Russell Wilson. And similar to his nickname, Russell Wilson has a dangerous mix of skills. The ability to throw from the pocket and extend plays and throw on the run. Not to mention an absolute winner. Usually has his team in the playoffs competing for Super Bowl opportunities. And he'll manage to break a tackle and get this forward for a couple. It'll be second down. This is second and eight. Throwing is Wilson. He'll let this go deep for Sutton. And this is dropped. Oh, boy. A chance for a big play early, but he could not secure it. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Pressure comes, and Wilson's going to go down. It was Eric Armstead fighting his way through that time to record the sack. Fourth down, so on is the punter, Riley Dixon. Back to return it, Christian McCaffrey. This will be fielded at the 17. It'll be a 44-yard punt. The return goes for eight. Back onto the field comes this offense, ready for their second drive. And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion, guys a little bit jumpy. Yeah, you do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. Just like us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went three and out. that opportunity. <laughs> no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'm trying to do better here. <laughs> That's just flat out a beautiful throw right there. It was a rope. That's maybe the speed you would see on a slant, but he threw the head downfield with that kind of pace. Now, if he throws that one with 
any type of arc, puts a little air under it, that play doesn't happen. He had to fire it in there, and he did exactly that. First carry for Christian McCaffrey. Flashed the stick skills, but didn't get a ton from it. Stopped short of the 35. Ball on the 36 now. Here's second and three. The throwing here, Purdy. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away. And now it's third. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Purdy looking to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Five yards is the pick up there as that extends this drive. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Purdy now to throw off the play action. And his throw is going to be incomplete. I love those corners who can not only cover, but don't mind getting a little physical as well. How about the coverage on that play, knocking that pass away? A second down throw for Purdy. And that falls to the ground, incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. Purdy sets up to throw again. Complete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. Tight defense there on third down, but what a product of good coaching and even better execution because he realized he's in field goal range. No sense forcing anything, and he made sure he didn't. And his kick is good. And that'll make it 3-0 here in the first. Well, both teams kind of feeling each other out here. Now after three drives, we have a score with that field goal. Yeah, they're still waiting for their breakout drive to come to them, all right? They're using the playbook well. They're looking for that extra section that says touchdowns instead of field goals. But they'll take the three for now and try and get set up for more later. And Smith not going to bring it out, so it's a touchback. Back onto the field comes this offense, ready for their second drive. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. They'll set up the screen. This is Williams. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. It's a first down on a gain of 10. Now we give up the middle to Williams. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. No surprise at all. They're looking for the big man early in this one. The only surprise for them, he couldn't hang on to the pass. On third down, Wilson. And to find the open man, that's complete. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. The first catch for Judy, good for a first down. So for this defense, a tall order had tried to defend against Russell Wilson. Charles, your keys for how they might go about keeping him in check? Well, before we even get to the keys, let's start with the problems he presents because he feels pressure so well. He's got a great sixth sense, maybe even a seventh and eight. He knows where the pressure's coming from. He knows how to slide away from it, sometimes run away from it, and then he finds good throwing lanes to deliver downfield. So to me, it's that pressure inside, big, tall guys to make him try and throw over them and make his height work against him. Wilson's throw taken in by Sutton. It's the first time that they've looked his way tonight, and he comes up with a first down on the play. To throw is Wilson. And down he goes. They sack him back. 
back right around the 41-yard line. The pressure from multiple guys there as they bury him for a big nine-yard loss. Well, obviously, the pass rush gets the glory and the statistics on this play, but the coverage, they deserve a ton of credit, too. Denied open windows, erased the quarterback's targets one by one. Everywhere he looked, someone was covered. Only a matter of time before someone got there to bring him down. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. There's Wilson to throw. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. He's a little trigger happy right there. And it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, anytime, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. And I tell you what, he got it from 58. That had lots of leg behind him, and that will tie us at 3-3. That was perfect. From distance, he steps up, knocks it right down Main Street. Yeah, Main Street's celebrating right now with him, aren't they? I love the mechanics of the whole thing. Snap, hold, everything was right on target, and the blocking was perfect, and he executed so, so well. Tokyo set to go on offense once again. And after the field goal last time, let's see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted them. They weren't happy with that field goal. I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive in with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. On second down, McCaffrey. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. 12 yards there and a first down. How many times do we say in this game a speed kills and it does it in so many different ways? In this case, you've got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary. That led to a really nice game. And after the good game last play, this time they say, uh-uh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Again, they run. Again, it's McCaffrey. Breaks a tackle. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. They've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. Pass taken in by his big tight end. Big strides. Look at him go. And touchdown. George Kittle. have taken the lead. When they drew that up, I don't think they envisioned it ending in a house call, but he got it, took it all the way home. Really impressive run after the catch, wasn't it? That was, a, that was really special by him. But let's face it, in today's NFL, those tight ends are often former wide receivers or maybe even sometimes bigger running backs. They just put them in a position to get a great matchup and make plays like that. Moody good with the extra point. And the lead is now 10 to 3. Five plays there on that drive. And it all ends with a George Kittle touchdown. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. Portland's offense now about set to take over. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you, you described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. On first and ten, it's Wilson. Flushed out right. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a halt. He'll get just a yard on the scramble. It's second down. Second and nine at the 
They'll run out of the gun here. Williams. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Ten three our score after one here on EA Sports. Portland football here ready to begin the second quarter. The offense on third down tonight, just one for three thus far. This is third down and 12. Wilson. He'll get this to his tight end, Trapper. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. Call it a loss of two there on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. It looked like the defense, they were ready for that one. Really left him almost no room to work after catching the ball. He could throw every move in the book at him. They were there, and they tackled him for a loss. Dixon, the punter, is on as he sends it away. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return. Tokyo set to go on offense once again. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And, partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. But let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. Yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. I would say it might be a good idea for him to reintroduce himself to his receivers at the half because they're definitely on different wavelengths. But I also don't advocate waiting that long. Next series, before you get out there, hey, let's get together, guys. Let's get this thing moving. They'll give him four yards there, and it'll be fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. So a good punt there, but a nice return of 11 yards. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goal posts. Now a second and ten. Up the middle, it's Williams. And he powers his way up past the 30. Five yards, now it's third and five. There's Wilson. Pressure comes and down he goes. That is Nick Bosa from out on the edge who worked his way in for the sack. And he continues, Charles, to be under constant pressure. And these sacks, they're starting to pile up. And if they want to have a realistic chance in this one, they've got to change their blocking assignments. They've got to do a better job to keep him upright. If he's going to be on the deck constantly, they've got no chance to win this game. Riley Dixon now to put it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And a fair catch signal for and taken successfully. So a change of possession here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. And they show run with three tight ends here on first down. They start on the ground with McCaffrey. And that to the 30. It'll be second down. Not a lot of running room there, not a place to make a cut and kind of exit out because they had everything bottled up. Looked to me like the linemen were taking on their blocks really well and giving up no creases. They had three yards on first down, just one yard there. Back-to-back -back runs, I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. Purdy with it on third and long. Man open, that's Debo Samuel. And oh, he's just gonna be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. Here's Mitch Wisnowski now.
That's returnable now for Smith. And a seven-yard return following a punt for 45 yards. Portland's offense now about set to take over. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. And he'll be brought down here at the 28. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four. They'll stay on the ground with Williams. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. But, Parker, if the defense isn't going to adjust and they keep giving them those five, six, seven-yard runs over and over, they're likely to run it the whole way to the end zone. They'll be more than happy to take the yardage available and save some of their other plays in the playbook for another time. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. So after two first downs, they get another here. First and 10 at the 45. Now a handoff. Here's Williams. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Consecutive positive runs for him on the last two snaps. He certainly appears to be trying to put the offense on his back and just move them down the field when his number is called. The way he's running it, I keep going back to him. Oh, and they sent the man in motion too late. This is going to be a delay. Delay of game. So they'll go ahead and accept the penalty. Still second down. Following the delay, here's second and nine. Now it's Wilson. A short one to the tight end, Troutman. Only able to gain a couple there. Third and seven now. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Here's Wilson. And he's going to be brought down here in the backfield. Nick Bosa. That is now two sacks for him here in this first half. So that now four first-half sacks. This pass rush has been unrelenting. And partner, you hear that sound of paper being ripped to shreds? That's the game plan that they've had so far because they've got to say to themselves right now, we have to do something differently. Here's Riley Dixon now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. Taking it about the 16. That'll go as a punt of 42, seven on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Tokyo set to go on offense once again. Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football, but still they've got the lead here and now a chance to add on to that lead if they can get points on this drive. First and 10 upcoming. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Here's second and 10. Back to throw, Purdy. Got a man right side, it's McCaffrey. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. It's a first down on a gain of 10. Now Purdy. Over the middle, complete to Samuel. That's good, the completion there for seven yards, and it's second down. From the shotgun to McCaffrey. And good vision there as he's across midfield and down to the 45 yard line. 15 yards on the play, first down. Our score 10 to 3 with two minutes remaining in quarter number two. Purdy to throw it on first down. He's got this complete to Ayuk on the outrun. 
So the completion good for six yards. And that'll bring up second down. Here's Purdy. Connects with Kittle underneath. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. Purdy. And that is incomplete. But the pressure there on third down, forcing the errant pass. Fourth down coming up. And this defense definitely in his head there on third down, and he's pretty fortunate. They didn't call for grounding on this one. That was a good 10 feet over everyone's head. And that is no good. I oh, hit it well from distance, but he couldn't work it back in, and this will remain a one-touchdown game. And this is one of the risks you run when you attempt a long field goal. If you miss, the defense takes over the spot of the placement. So now they've got a chance to get one more drive in before halftime. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at their own 43. Now it's Wilson. This will be caught. Judy. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. That one good for 37 yards. They started this drive with terrific field position, and it's going to get even better after that play. Had great options with where they started, so they decided to press their advantage, and it paid off. So a big play as it gets them all the way down to the 20 now for first and 10. Now Wilson. Right back to Judy, and it's complete. Touchdown! Jerry Judy as the first half is winding down. And the Lumberjacks have a chance to tie the game here in the final seconds of the half. I don't think it's any state secret to know what they were saying before the start of this drive. Let's go and punch one in the end zone and go into the halftime feeling a heck of a lot better about ourselves. Let's go get this done. Yeah, tie things up, and then you get a brand-new ball game. Lutz with the extra point, and that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Final play of the half, Purdy. He's got his target. That's complete. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. So thanks to the late touchdown, it's a time ball game here heading to break. As we send you to Orlando we to check this in with be a Jonathan close battle Coachman coming in, at RAA And we have not Sports. been disappointed. Half They're all report. even Coach. to this point. This has the feeling of a game that could go right down to the wire. One mistake or one big play could turn out to be the difference. All right, okay, Brandon, thank thanks. you very yeah, much. We'll get back to you to and Charles some changes in just a minute. Been a Week two of the preseason is a bonus. Point. Each team now with just From one more game zone, after this Marvin one. Mims. And then we will get it all yeah, started the as we normally do. The is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. So this offense ready to go to begin this third quarter. It's a tie football game here. What do you think, Charles, the message was at halftime? Well, I think that they probably just looked at things and said, we're fortunate that this is a tie game. No need to panic. No need to change a whole lot. We didn't play anything close to our best in the first half, so we don't have to go out and win one for the Gipper. Let's just go out and play our best football and win one for us. Again from the 20 after the incompletion. Here's second and 10. Stidham now off the bootleg. That's to the rookie, Marvin Mims. And he'll get this up past the 25 before Kyle Shanahan doesn't care much for that last call. So out comes the red challenge flag. 
Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. The leading rusher in NCAA history from Youngstown State. Here's Julio McLaughlin. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it here. Why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. Stidham. That's complete. It's Greg Dulcich. Call the gain of three on the play. And it'll be second down. Brings up second and seven at the 35-yard line. Stidham. In trouble, and he's taken down. Randy Gregory able to run him down for a loss of 12 that time. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Yeah, and that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, they'd be starting in the NBA at power forward. It's really a difficult task. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Hits his running back, Piran. It'll be a pickup of 16, but they'll remain short of the marker, and it's fourth down. I think that we all figured when he caught it that short of the marker that the defense almost relaxed and said, we got this covered, and then all of a sudden, space to run after the catch, and now they're screaming, somebody get him down. Fortunately, they got to him and forced the fourth down. A 40-yard punt, no return. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. Now this game, it has obviously been all about the defense on both sides of the football. Which offense is going to break through here? We'll see if they can do it on this drive. They'll start with a run by Mitchell. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. First down. First and 10 at the 27-yard line. Another run with Mitchell. And now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. No gain on the play. Brings up second and 10 at the 27 yard line. Up the middle, here's Mitchell. Four yards on the pick up there as they get it back to a more manageable third and seven. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. Darnold. That's complete to the tight end Warner. And they get him down about two yards shy of the line to gain. A third down pick up of five. I thought maybe when he caught he'd have a good chance of getting that first down, but that's a nice job of holding him up and preventing him from getting to the sticks. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is set away. Fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 15-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt, and they will take over first and 10. A first carry for Samaj P. Ryan. And that closed up quickly there as he gets it up only to about the 17. Second and nine. Stidham from the shotgun. A throw on the run, but that's going to be incomplete. Well, we all know possessions are crucial in a tie game. And let's face it, I really didn't need to tell you that. You already knew it. So when he sees he's got nothing good going, an excellent decision to just send that one to the sideline. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. Nice call by the defense there on third down. Just flood the field with extra defensive backs in their dime package. Nowhere to go with the football. Forces the incompletion. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. 
And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36-yard line. The Tokyo offense heads back out there now. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys are tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. On second down, here's Mitchell. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. They'll come up now, third and three. Brings up third and three. They'll try and pick it up with Mitchell. And he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. They're able to convert with a gain of four. A lot to fill out the spot there, and he got it. But it wasn't by much, was it? I remember Coach Madden talking about, depending on which foot the official used, that would tell you whether you had the first down or not. You want that upfield foot to be the one that spots the ball, don't you? And you and I have the luxury of a couple extra views here in the booth, and he did get it, but not by much. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. Well, injury's never good, especially here in the preseason. Hopefully nothing serious. They'll take a look at him, and we'll step aside for a moment. And they'll try the air now with Darnold. It's complete to Chris Conley. And that's good for a gain of six. And third and one now. Darnold from the gun. And it is caught. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Here's Darnold. That's caught, he finds Danny Gray. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Ball on the 27, here's second and a yard. The shotgun snap for Darnold. A short throw here to Rontu. It'll be a pickup of four. Good enough to earn him yet another first down. A play fake, and it's Darnold. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Bell. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. I'll tell you what, this offense is playing a little bit of keep away right now. They've come out here in the third quarter, possessed the ball for quite a while, and they keep on converting. Nice pitch and catch there to set up the first and goal. They'll run with Mitchell. And he's brought down right at the five-yard line. Give him two on the play. The yards may start getting a little tougher to come by down here near the goal line. That's good work defensively there on first down, holding them to a short game. Once more with Mitchell. Give him right around four on the carry. We'll see if they want to keep pounding here on third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. And it's caught. Touchdown. Take the lead. Moody good with the extra point, and that makes it a 17 10 score. Here is Wisnowski to boot it away following the touchdown. Taking it about the one. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. They find themselves down 17-10 as they come up on a first and 10. They start on the ground with Piran. And room to run as he's up past the 35-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. On 
On the handoff, McLaughlin. Call it a gain of three, but not enough to move the sticks. It'll be third and about a foot or two. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. By the skin of their teeth, they are able to convert on third and inches. There are a lot of different formulas to winning football, but one constant over the years, winning on third down. That pickup there was big because they had struggled throughout this one. First down, they go back to Piran. Taken down at the 42. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more preseason football on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. As it looks like we are just about set and ready to begin with the fourth. The give is to McLaughlin. And three yards there takes him to the 45. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Stidham. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted. Thrown back across his body. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. tough as they come you're driving to try to put the ball in the end zone and tie the game and that happens it's exciting for us wasn't it because we were thinking hey we might be headed towards overtime instead it looks like this one may very well be done and guess what if you're a fantasy owner and you have that defense you just had a big big game didn't you now moody for the pat And the lead is up to 14. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Portland's offense now about set to take over. We'll see if they can band back together after the pick six. It hurt badly, but still within striking distance. A two-score game with a good chunk of time on the clock. The drive starts with a handoff to Piran. And he'll take it forward for about five up to the 28-yard line. From the 28, it's second and five. Paul Start's going to push him back, but these days, how hard must it be to be an offensive lineman? It's very hard, Brandon. You've got defensive linemen flinching, trying to draw you offside. You've got the loud crowds, and there are just so many super athletic players on defense now that you have to deal with each week. But through it all, these guys just sit in there for four quarters and slug it out. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. And that's a lesson learned from the previous drive. Last time he forced one, and it turned into a pick six. Here, he knows better, and he just throws that one away. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Sometimes the game is pretty simple. Put a few extra defensive backs on the field, give them nowhere to throw the football, force the incompletion, and get off the field on third down. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And the fair catch is made at about the 27-yard line. Tokyo set to go on offense once again. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Second and 10 now from the 27. Now it's Darnold. Over the middle, the catch made by Mitchell. 
And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. The catch and run, good for 24 yards. A great job there, and that old cliche, taking what the defense gives you, comes right into play. Nothing too out of the ordinary about the throw. Just a little dump off over the middle. But what is out of the ordinary is what he did with it after the catch. Not only did he grab the ball, but how about the significant yardage he picked up after he pulled it in? First down, here's Mitchell. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Great effort by Alex Singleton as he finishes that playoff. After the loss, they'll come up second and 13. Out of the shotgun, here's Darnold. And this complete to Mitchell. And he's out of bounds as he gets this down to the 45. And they'll need the 39 here for a first. This is third down. Back to throw, Darnold. And they're going to get him. He's taken down for a sack. Back at the 47-yard line. A well-designed corner blitz that gets him for a loss of eight yards. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. And they'll send out their punter now as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Portland's offense now about set to take over. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news. But this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. So he stopped for no gain, and it'll be second down. Fourth quarter, every drive so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. 12 yards there and a first down. We'll definitely see some open running lanes, and he's taking advantage of it right now, but that shouldn't be a surprise. Defense has the lead. They're playing for the pass first. Running game working. They'll stick with it on first down. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Brings up second and four. They go play action with Stidham. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete going for the knockout blow right there. I think if I'm up two scores, I'd be worried about an interception, but playing this way is what got him this lead. So you may as well ride it out to the end. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Good yardage on the completion there. And when they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back as quickly as possible. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. It's been clear in this matchup which side has been the more physical one. It's been this defense. And here's another example on that last play. To throw is Stidham. Incomplete. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. Stidham going back to the air. They'll set up the screen. It's McLaughlin, and he gets this only to the 41, not near enough for the first. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough, and now fourth down. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. And he missed it. It's no good. And this will remain a two-touchdown game. For Brandon, anything beyond 50, you start rolling the dice a bit. And once you get up around 57, 58 yards, the chances of making it go down dramatically. And sure enough, this one winds up no good. Tokyo is set to go on offense once again. And they enjoy this fourth quarter lead starting out first and 10, now following the missed field goal.
Here's Mitchell now to kick off the drive. He'll get this down to the 48-yard line. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Here is third down and four. To throw is Darnold. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field that's popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. And did he put that on a dime? He did. Wow. Out of bounds at the one-yard line. Portland's offense now about set to take over. And the way their last drive ended, boy, it was frustrating. They had a pretty good drive going. It was sustained, and then it stalled out, Charles, and they missed the field goal and got nothing out of it. Is that insult to injury? Because they had such a sustained drive, as you noted. So you know for the head coach, it almost felt like a little bit of failure to send out the field goal unit and then not even see the ball go through the post. What a bummer on that last drive for them. Got to pick themselves up from that one. Oh, what a bad throw there. It's intercepted. Isaiah Oliver with the INT. And he will not get all the way home, but he will take this back down to about the two-yard line. But such a costly interception. Nearly a pick six, but now they're so close, they are knocking on the door for a touchdown. And I never want to get on any team for being aggressive because that's part of what their makeup is, and oftentimes it's successful. But in this case... You've got to be selective about it and make sure you take care of the football. That interception almost cost them six points. Now their defense has to run onto the field, probably giving the quarterback a few side eyes along the way. They've got to see if they can stop a score. They run it with Mason. Nothing doing there. They're going to wind up holding him at the two. No gain there, and it's going to set up second and goal. No gain on the play. Leads to second and goal at the two-yard line. And they'll run again. And he is into the end zone for a touchdown. Jordan Mason taking it in from two yards out. And the Dragons have put this one to bed here in the fourth quarter. It's an important touchdown right there as now they're really beginning to pull away. Yeah, this was a tight game until not too long ago. But since then, they've hit the accelerator, and they pushed the lead up to three scores here in the fourth quarter, and I don't see them looking back. Moody good with the extra point, and the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. Here is Wisnowski to boot it away following the touchdown. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. So now, Charles, this drive, maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Now it's Stidham. And that is incomplete. Wow, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. Throwing again here, Stidham. Had his hands on it, but dropped it. The rookie making a little bit of a rookie mistake. Third down. Now it's Stidham. The 
throw here right side, Ryan Falls incomplete. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. Here we go. Stidham on fourth down. And it's knocked away and incomplete. A well, fourth down pass play doesn't work out. And the ball will go over on downs on the short side of the field. Well, at this stage of the game in the second half, down three scores, I guess they felt like they needed to push. And let's face it, with this deficit, if they give up another score here after they didn't get it, does it really matter? Right. It really doesn't. They had to go and try and make something happen if they had any chance of winning this game. Touchdown! Elijah Mitchell, 39 yards. And the Dragons help the lead to four scores now here in this fourth quarter. Well, when coaches come into a game preaching total team effort, CD, I think this is the type of ball game that they're dreaming of. It was pretty apparent early on that they were clicking in all three phases. It's, it's been fun to watch. Yeah, sometimes in the NFL, you end up with matchups like we've been watching here. And when you go back to the early drives, you can just see that one squad was on a different level in this game. Safe to say, we have been disappointed in watching their execution throughout this contest. Here is Wisnowski to boot it away following the touchdown. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Portland's offense now about set to take over. Charles, we know that this offense is aggressive. We saw that last drive. They went for it on fourth down, didn't get it. Then they give up the touchdown. So now you feel like they really need to respond here. They certainly do, but let's face it. Sometimes when you take that risk, you understand if you fail, a little more onus goes back on your ball club to try and pick themselves back up. So the line of scrimmage all the way up to midfield now as they've got it first and 10. From midfield now, here's Stidham. Over the middle complete. That's McLaughlin. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that'll make it second down. Now Stidham. So it's our visitors with a football as we get your reset. They face a third down now as they try to find a late score. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Well, it just seems like all game long there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. Yeah, he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. Now, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Off the play fake. Here's Stidham. And that'll be off the mark, too far out in front, and it's incomplete. Even with such a big lead late, the effort hasn't lapsed one bit. If the offense wants to score some points in this one, they're going to have to earn it. These guys are not giving up anything. Stidham. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. Now defensively, you look at the numbers. Another incomplete pass that we just saw, and they're under 200 yards passing for the game, so they've done their job on that side of the ball. Yeah, recently I was actually working a game where a quarterback had a streak of five straight games without a 200-yard game, and that was a big talk both in his town and amongst his team. How do we get the passing game going? So big credit to them holding them under 200 today. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. Now a timeout called for by the defense, and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. He gets away from one, and they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 
89 yards rushing now for Mitchell. He's got a first down. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. But once again, it's Mitchell. And he'll take this for a short gain on what will prove to be the final play of this ball game. Well, this was a very close ball game at halftime, Charles, but in the second half, that offense kind of kicked things into another gear, and they were able to pull away for the victory. And, Brandon, I think they're the type of team that just looked in the mirror and said, hey, ton of pressure on, but we're the type of team that can flat out handle it. They stood up, stood up with confidence, and made it happen for a victory. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say good night, everybody.